<clears throat> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Let us go ahead on and pray. And let's get started. Amen. I'm so honored to be able to bring you the word of God once again. Amen. This is Pastor Larry, New Life in Christ Jesus Church, Sacramento, California. And I'm, hello, how you doing up there? You need healing? Praise the Lord. That's why we're here. All you have to do is believe the word of God and, and accept it, receive it, the same way you receive salvation, by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we realize that many people are hurting. Many people are suffering with sicknesses and diseases. And now, Father, even this virus is going around. And so, Father, we come to you tonight believing, Father, that you will minister to the heart of your people that you will cause their understanding to be enlightened, that they will know and realize and that, that healing is available and that is for them today. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name because, Father, I realize that many people don't have the resources or sometimes the resources that they have is not adequate to what they have need of. Sometimes it's only what you can do in their life that will make a difference. Because you can't buy healing. So, Father, we come to you. We, re we thank you for manifesting your strength, manifesting your glory and your anointing upon these people under the sound of my voice. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining us today. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be with you a little while. Then we're going to let you go and have some fun. Just like I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to go and knock out some Z's. <laughs> amen. But uh, I just had in my heart to, to come out tonight and encourage you once again. This is number... This is lesson number nine along this line. Amen. I, my, my job is to encourage you. Remember the word of God says in Romans chapter 10, <clears throat> excuse me, and verse number 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I want you to make up your, make it, make up in your mind right now that you're going to believe Will you, will you believe with me tonight? Amen. Then if you will believe with me tonight, then I want you to come in agreement with me tonight also. Amen. I, I'm not, I don't want you to, to only believe. I want you to come in agreement with the word of God. The Bible said, if any two shall agree as touching anything that shall ask of our Father which is in heaven, it shall be done. So, I'm going to, I want to ask you to agree with me tonight. I'm praying for a lot of you. I've already let you all know. I've let quite a few people know that I'm praying for, for them. Amen. That on my networks, I, you know, I just, I just want you to know that I'm praying for you and that I want to see you blessed. I want to see you experiencing God's best. I want to see you experiencing God's miracle, God's breakthrough power in your life. Amen. And I know it's not going to, sometimes, you know, you think that it's, you, sometimes it's, it just seems like it's difficult. Sometimes it might even seem hard. But the only hard thing about it is that you, you understanding that it is God's will for you to be healed. Amen. Once you understand that, the rest is easy. Because God has already made it. He, he already gave us this promise. And glory to God. When we understand the promise. God has already made it plain to us. That 
we are his children. Amen. And a, a good loving father doesn't get pleasure out of seeing his children walk around hurting, sick, and not being able to take care of his children. Your father wants to take care of you. Your father wants to heal you, Silver Moon. Your father wants to bring you out of this, this spirit. Of, he wants to bring you out of this depression. Amen. Love Pink. God wants to bring you out. Glory to God. You are where you are. And God wants to show you where he is. And then he wants to bring you to where you was created to be. And that was with him. Amen. That's with him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now, I know that so many times we experience pain in our body and we think that, God, why you let this happen? I just want to encourage you not to blame God for the pain that you may be experiencing in your body. That's not, God didn't cause that pain to come in your body. Amen. Remember in John chapter 10, verse 10, it's the thief that comes up but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. He said, but I come that you might have what? You might have life and that more abundantly. That doesn't sound like God is wanting to put uh, sickness on you and diseases on you. Amen. That sounds like God wants to touch you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to heal you. God wants to make you free. Amen. He wants to make you free. And so let's believe that. Let's believe together tonight. Let's believe together tonight. And let's come in agreement tonight with the word of God. Amen. And let God do what he does best. God is a miracle worker. Amen. He's a miracle worker. And he wants to work a miracle for you. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind right now <clears throat> every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. God, you said whatever I bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. So I bind it up right now in the spiritual realm in Jesus' name that is operating in the lives of the people that were, that is under the sound of my voice. Now, Father, I release by faith the spirit of faith, the spirit of faith to begin to rest upon each of their hearts. Yes, Lord, thank you. And Father, I believe with them. I agree with them for their healing today, tonight. This is their night. This is their breakthrough night. I'm in agreement with that, with your word, and I'm in agreement with them for their breakthrough, their healing, their miracle tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. So now, sometimes when you get sick, you think that God made you sick. God didn't make you sick. And then you go, you go to say, well, why did God allow this to happen. God didn't allow you, uh, you, you, most of the time we are the cause of it because we have made bad choices. We have done things that, that was not, that had nothing to do with God. And, and we want to blame God for the results that we received from the action that we took. Amen. This is, this is only a this is, this is just some of the things that block us from receiving our healing. What do you mean? When we say that God did it and when God had nothing to do with it, this is, this, is, this is the work of the enemy using you to block your own healing. Amen? I don't know how to explain that, but I have tried to, you know, and I've been, you know, God don't heal the same way every time. Because you see, I used to be very sick. And I used to have a lot of pain in my body. And and every time, you know, and I've been I've been sick and several times since then, but not the same way because God never let allowed that to come back upon me that that he healed me of because I understand I understood the truth of the matter and I refused to allow it to come back. Amen. Because I stood on the word of God. 
and God would do the same for you. When God heal you, it's up to you to keep your healing. God cannot make you maintain your healing. It's up to you, the individual. Amen. God is here to heal you and to set you free from whatever it is that the enemy has done to afflict you. Now, God is not going to, he's not going to get, he's not going to get mad at you if you don't release your faith. Amen. He's not going to be upset with you if you don't release your faith. But one thing, you just, you're going to walk, you're going to walk away the same way that you come. If you don't release your faith. Amen. And that, and you can't blame God for that. You can only blame yourself for that. Because God has made it possible that every one of us can be healed. Amen. He bore our sicknesses. Amen. And he carried our diseases. And by his stripes, we are healed. We're going to go through some scriptures tonight. And as we go through these scriptures, I pray that you open up your heart and allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. First scripture we're going to go to is found in the book of Exodus chapter 15 and verse number 26. Amen. Jehovah Rapha is in the house. Jehovah Rapha is in the house. Amen. So let's read. If this is Exodus chapter 15, verse number 26. If if you let me let me go to my King James. Amen. Let me just go to my King James. And that's the book of Exodus, chapter 15, and verse number 26. And said, if thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and would do that which is right in his sight and would give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Notice what God is saying. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptian. Now I like this part right here. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's Jehovah Rapha speaking to us. The Lord our healer. He's speaking to us through that word, through that scripture. Amen. And he's showing us that he will, he will not allow these diseases to come upon us if we would hearken to his word. If we would pay attention to his word. Amen. If we will listen to his word. Since we brought that up, let's go to the book of Proverbs. Put the Proverb chapter chapter four. In the book of Proverbs chapter four, look with me in verse number twenty. Proverbs chapter four and verse number twenty says, My son, attend to my words. In other words, pay attention to what I'm saying to you. Take my words seriously. Don't take it half heartedly. Pay attention to what the word is saying to you because God is going to speak to your heart. If you really believe in God for healing, friend, then God is waiting for you to release your faith and believe. Remember the, the leper that came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 8? He didn't know what's in God's will for him to be healed, but he ran into the crowd. He didn't have no, he, he didn't have nothing to lose. He, if he didn't get healed, he was, he was going to die. He was going to die anyway. So he, he just ran into the crowd. He just ran into where Jesus was. Jesus did not get afraid because that leopard came up to him. He did not turn and run away. Hey, what are you doing coming up? Don't you know you cannot come in the presence of people when you like this, when you carry this type of disease? Amen. No, Jesus did not flinch. He did not become afraid. Jesus looked at the man. The man came and said, and he kneeled. Notice he did. He kneeled down at Jesus' feet and he said, Lord, if thou wilt, Thou canst make me clean. And Jesus looked at him and stretched forth his hand and said, I will be thou clean. You see, the man didn't know was it God's will for him to be healed. But we have the word of God showing us that it is God's will for us to be healed. He didn't have the word to show that it was his God, it was God's will for him to be healed. But we do have the word. Amen. We can read it ourselves. 
We can see what God is saying to us. Amen. Well, but I don't believe that Bible ain't nothing but a bunch of hocus pocus stuff. Uh, that's that's why you're not receiving your healing because you you have no, you thinking your your thinking has not even come in line with the word of God. You still think that is something else when God is telling you that this is the the blueprint to your life. This is the blueprint to your life. Amen. So he said in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter four and verse number twenty said. My son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. That word, <clears throat> attend, means to pay attention. Amen. Pay attention. Acknowledge. Amen. Study it. Draw close to it. And it will draw close to you. Amen. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. In other words, Listen to what I'm saying, because in what I'm saying is life in every word. There's life in every word. As you hear and believe, it will produce the results that you're believing for. Amen. Notice what he said now in the verse number 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. What is he talking about? He's referring to the word. The word has the ability to heal you, to deliver you, and to make you free. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. You know, most, you know, when I was growing up, when I first started to understand this, this word, I had made those little uh, four, uh, uh, three by two cards, amen, or index cards. And I wrote scriptures down. And I used to tape them on my refrigerator. I used to put them in my in my car, my dash. And man, and then and 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 every every time I think about it, every time I look at it, I would read it. I would read it. Why was I doing that? Because he said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. I will read it out loud so that my ear can hear the word of God. Why? Because the Bible said, faith cometh by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the word of God. So as I hear the word of God, and knowing what God has said in the word in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, amen. So now I understand that as I meditate on the word, as I continually, as I continue to read the word and, and think on the word, I'm merely thinking on God. Amen. I'm transforming my thought pattern so that I can think the way God thinks. God thinks that I'm healed. So why should I think that I'm healed? I want to I want to think that I'm healed too. Why? Because if I can believe what the word says, then it's mine. Amen. It's mine. Amen. I don't have to worry about what the critics say about Cause see, there's a lot of critics out there. A lot of people don't understand, and so they're gonna they're gonna criticize you because you're trying to understand. They're gonna talk about you. They're gonna try to talk you out of not reading the Bible, not praying, not spending time with God because they want you to be just like them. And most of the people that's like that, they're mostly are losers, and they want you to be a loser too. Amen. They want you to be without the promise of God in your life too because they refuse to believe. They don't want you to believe. And normally, these type of people that try to keep you from believing, they either a very close acquaintance or a family member. <laughs> That's the truth. Amen. A lot of family members that don't want to change, they're going to do everything they can to, to, to pull you back into that old life, that old lifeless lifestyle that you live prior becoming a born again child of God. And you can't blame God for that. You can only blame yourself for allowing it to happen. Amen. So he said in, in, in verse number 21, this is Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Amen. 
keep him in the midst of that heart. And, and you know, when I began, when I was in hurting, when I was hurting so much, I didn't have no one around me to help me to pray. I could, I, I didn't, I couldn't even call someone to ask them to pray with me or for me. I didn't have a phone at that time. But what I did had, what I did have was a Bible. Matter of fact, I had two or three Bibles. And I was lying in my bed crying like a baby. I mean, I was boohooing. I was crying like a baby. And all of, I was crying, God, I need help. God, I need help. God, help me. I'm in so much pain. God, help me. I was in so much pain. And all of a sudden, as I was crying out to God, I heard this voice. Get up and read your Bible. And it startled me. I jumped up and I ran to the door. And I looked out the door because I thought my brothers, my, somebody would come up and mess with me because I lived by myself. Amen. And so I ran to the door to see who it was messing with me. I come to find out, no one was there. And as I was going back, I closed the door. And so I went and peeped out the window to see was anyone trying to tip back up at the door to, to mess with me again. Because see, that, 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 that's, that's what I thought, that someone was picking at me. Somebody was messing with me. But to my amazement, no one was there. And then I realized that the devil is not going to ask me to get my Bible and read it. And so I realized God was talking to me. So I went and got my Bible. And I didn't have a desk at that time. I had an ironing board. <clears throat> I had an ironing board. And so I, I put the ironing board. I put my chair up to the ironing board. And I, I my I kitchen, just like a kitchen chair. And I pulled up the ironing board. I sat down by the ironing board with with, and I sit there and I level the iron board down low enough where it can be the, the, the height of a desk. And I, li I lined up three Bibles upon that iron board and Matthew Henry can quarter. Amen. And I began to read the Bible and I, and I got to the book of Mark gospel chapter 16. Let's go there. Mark gospel chapter 16. Amen. When I got to Mark gospel chapter 16, <clears throat> and I got down to verse number 15 and I started reading and started saying, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink in the deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, when I started reading this scriptures right here, they all, they all written in red. Amen. But when I started reading these scriptures right here, all of a sudden, they started like jumping off the page at me. I read again and it jumped again. The more, I, the more I read, the more it would jump at me. And then I began to just sit there and read it over and over and over. Then I began to sit back in the chair and I began to meditate on, think about what I'm reading. I began to think about what I'm reading. Then I go back and read it again. Then I read it two or three more times. Then I sit back again and then I let it just go. I just sit there and just begin, just let it roll over and over and over in my mind what I read. What am I doing? I'm meditating on the word of God. I'm getting the word of God from the pages into my spirit. Hallelujah. That was a rhema word for someone. You need to get the word from the pages in your spirit. Glory to God. Whew. That, that's a word for someone. You need to take that. You need to take that. Write that down and don't forget it because God is talking to you. Amen. And so I would read it and it would jump off the page. And I would just, and I would sit back and I would begin to think about what I was reading. I did it so many times, folks. Listen to me. I did that so many times. Lo and behold, I sat back and started meditating upon what I was reading. Then all of a sudden, in the spirit, I could see like a scroll going around and around. And I'm reading, right? I'm reading it with my eyes closed. I'm reading it in my spirit. I'm reading the word of God in my spirit. Why? Because I let it come off the pages into my spirit. 
And now I could read them right out of the spirit. Right out of the spirit. And God, that night, when God touched my body, I didn't have to go to the doctor, didn't have to pay no big doctor bill, didn't have to have no buy no prescription for medicines. When I understood what God was telling me through this word, amen, my Lord and my God touched my body that night. And from that night unto this night, I am healed. I'm walking in divine health because of what I learned. Amen. Because of what I learned. I'm walking in divine health. And God is my God is my judge. I had no one there to talk to but the, the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he, I'm telling you, folks, he showed me that the word has to come off the pages and into my heart. And once the word came off the pages and into my heart, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that my healing was just a step away. Amen. I knew it. And God can bring you to that same place of knowing. You can know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you are healed. Even before the manifestation happened. But when that happened for me, I began to praise God. I got. I went out of the house at midnight and I walked up and down my yard praising God and thanking God for what he has done for me because that pain just left my body just like that. Just left my body. And let me tell you something. It has never come back. It has never come back. Why? Because I chose to believe and allow the word to come off the pages into my spirit by meditating upon the word. What happened? How, what happened when that, what happened when the word came off the page into my spirit? The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse number 14, and the word became flesh. In other words, the word came alive. Hallelujah. The word came alive. That's right. Amen. It came alive and my body experienced a touch from heaven. You know, I'm talking about visitations on Sunday morning. I had a visitation that day. And that and that that visitation brought me to a whole new level in my spiritual walk. And I've never been sick in that area of my body since. Why? Because when God healed me, I would not let that devil take my healing away. Amen. And I learned a secret. I learned a secret. Amen. You will agree? That's good. I'm telling you, this is the secret. You've got, not, don't just agree with me though. Read, get the scripture. I tell you what scripture you can take. Verse 17 and 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Read them over and over and over and over. And let, the, let those two scriptures come off the page into your heart. Amen. And watch what God do for you. Watch what God do for you. Amen. Glory to God. And I don't, and I can't, now, now don't think that, don't think that, that, uh, that I'm trying to tell you something that's not going to work. It worked for me. And I believe it'll work for you. But I'm not God. And I can't, I, I don't know what's, I don't know your heart. I don't know how you view the word of God. I don't know how you receive the word of God. I don't even know how you hear the word of God. Amen. But the way you hear the word of God will determine what you will receive from the word of God. Oh, glory to God. I got to say that again. The way you hear the word of God or the way you read the word of God, the way you understand the word of God will determine the way you receive from the word of God. Mark chapter 16. That's right. Verse 17 and 18. Read them over and over and over and over. Let it go from the pages into your spirit. Meditate upon them. Meditate upon those scriptures. And let God reveal to you his hidden secrets. Amen. Because when he revealed it to you, that means it belongs to you. 
That means it belongs to you. The word of God is your way out of your sickness and diseases. Amen. Amen, amen. So now let's, now let's look right here. Now verse number 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. Amen. So the first thing you're going to realize that your sickness and diseases did not come from God. Your sickness and diseases came from the devil. Amen. It's connected with an, a demonic spirit or evil spirit. Amen. And so the first thing he's telling you to do, first thing you're going to find out right there in verse number 17, that he gives you, he gives you the power over the, de over the devils through his name. Amen. Through his name. He said, these signs will follow them that believe in my name, in my name. So you, you, you've been, you've been, you've been given power to operate through his name because it's in his name that, that has the, the, the ability to deliver you and to set you free. I can't deliver you. You can't be delivered in my name. My name is Larry. Amen. But I can, my name don't have, my name cannot deliver you. Amen. But, but, but the one that have come to destroy the works of the devil, according to, according to the word of God, that was his purpose for coming, to destroy the works of the devil. How's he going to do it? Through your belief. Through your belief. Can you believe with me tonight? Can you believe with me? Can you release your faith with me for your breakthrough? I'm coming in agreement with you. The Bible said, if any two shall agree as touching anything that you ask of our Father, which is in heaven, the Bible said, it shall be done. I'm coming in agreement with you for your breakthrough, for your healing. Amen. I love it when you get your healing. I love it when you, when you release your faith. Amen. It's a blessing when you release your faith. Amen. So don't look at it like it's a uh, don't look at it like it like it's something out of the ordinary because God wants you to release your faith. God wants you to believe. God wants you to come in agreement with the word. Amen. He wants you to come in agreement with the word. Glory to God. Amen. So now, in verse number 17 again, he said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Notice the sickness and disease is not coming from God. So if it's not coming from God, then it's coming from the devil. Amen. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Notice what it said right the latter part of verse number 18. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Notice what he said. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. They are anointing right now. It's starting to rest upon you that are listening right now. That anointing is starting to rest upon you that are believing God for a healing. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You that are right there that have not gone away. You that are serious with God right now. There's an anointing right now starting to rest upon you. Oh, glory to God. It's just like elect, it's just like electric waves are going into your body right now. Amen. Just like electric waves are going into your body right now. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. Amen. Shaka. Madliyakai. Now, believe with me right now. Release your faith right now with me. And believe. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release that anointing right now. Upon every heart and every soul. Under the sound of my voice. I cancel every demonic spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I rebuke it in the spiritual realm right now. And I cancel those arguments over their souls. And Father, I claim their souls for the kingdom of God. Now, Father, I give you a heart that believes. Receive their hearts, Father. 
They'll believe it now. Drive out that sickness. Drive out that disease. Drive out that virus. Let them be made whole now. In Jesus' name. There go to the healing virtue. There go to the healing power right now. Receive it. There it is. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Mm, glory to God. Let's go to another scripture here. Let's go to another scripture. Amen. Now look at Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, not complain, not become grouchy, not become angry. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. Notice what he said? Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. Because sin is one of the key factors that have, that have opened the door for this sickness to come upon our bodies. And once we can acknowledge that it was the, not God's fault, but it was our fault because of a, a lifestyle that we live, because of not uh, acknowledging the sin that was in our life, when we acknowledge that, we, op we, we close that door to that enemy, to that devil who had brought that sickness upon you. Amen. You need to close that door. You need to, I'm talking to someone, you need to close that door right now. Amen. You need to close that door and you need to repent. You need to ask God to forgive you. Amen. Close that door and then ask God to forgive you and, and, and watch what God do for you. Close the door. Close the door of your past. Don't let your past hold you back. Don't let your past mistakes stop you from moving forward. Amen? Don't let it stop you from moving forward. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. God is talking to us. God is calling us to humble ourselves before his mighty hand. Amen? If we will seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive. God wants to forgive us our sins. He doesn't want to see us groveling in our sins. He wants to forgive us of our sins. And once we are forgiven, then we have to, all, see, the hardest part about that is that, see, God don't have no problem forgive you when you ask. The hardest part about that, it take time for you to forget that you, that it, you have, you have to, it, I'm going to say it like this. You got to believe that God has been, that God has forgiven you and, and stop beating yourself up because of what you did. You are more harder on yourself than God will ever be. Amen. God wants you to experience his mercy and his goodness forever. Amen. So let's do that. Let's make a, let's make a, a let's purpose in our heart today that we're going to receive all that God has for us. We're not going to let no dumb sin stop us from receiving the promises of God. Amen. We're going to do our, we're going to do our part. What is our part? Believe. We're going to believe in our heart and we're going to confess with our mouth the word of God. We're going to believe in our heart. We're going to confess with our mouth the word of God. And the word is going to make us free. The word is going to make us free. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> because you see, let's go to, let me, I, I, I got to, I got to take you. Let's go to Rome. No, uh, yeah, Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. Amen. It dropped in my spirit. So I got to take you there. Because you see, so many times we allow condemnation to stop us from receiving God's promise. Amen. We allow condemnation to stop us from receiving God's promise because we'll focus on our, we'll focus on what we did. We're more, we're more, we're more conscious of what we did and, and not 
are allowing the spirit of forgiveness to work in us because how can God forgive me? Look what I did. You just don't know what I did. It doesn't matter what you did. What matters is that you repented of what you did and you asked God to forgive you. And now God has forgiven you because you asked him, but now you got to forgive yourself and and stop blaming yourself for what for what for, for what happened. Hey Amen. You got to forgive yourself now. So now let's look at Romans chapter 8. Look at verse number 1. Romans chapter 8 verse number 1 said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Notice what he says now, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Because the moment you repent, the moment you turn away from it, you're not walking after the flesh that caused you to stumble and fall anymore. That flesh is, is no longer controlling your life because you repented. You acknowledged that you, that you was wrong and God forgave you. Now you just got to forgive yourself. Amen. And then you got to allow, you got to allow yourself, uh, uh, my God, you got to allow grace to work in your heart and forgive yourself. And once you are able to, to forgive yourself, now God, he's not going to remember it no more. Amen. Notice what he goes on to say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Now notice what he goes on to say, verse number two. For the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So everything that the devil did to try to interfere, try to stop us, try to block us from receiving our healing, try to stop us from receiving our deliverance, our miracle from the Lord. Amen. That devil has lost his, he has lost his stronghold. The moment we acknowledge God, I made a mistake. God, I know because of my mistake, this sickness has come upon my body. Lord, I repent. Amen. It doesn't matter how long it's been. What matters is that you acknowledge that you made a mistake. And once you acknowledge that you've made a mistake, God is going to reach out to you with compassion. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I know that you don't, that I know sometimes people, you know, it's hard to forgive and hard. And a lot, most, most times it's hard to forget about some things when we do. I've done some things in my lifetime. I tell you what, I don't want to go back there and dig them up. I don't want to go back and dig them up. I don't want that thing to bring condemnation back on me, on me again. And I don't want to talk. I don't want to go around people that's going to try to bring up my past. Uh, you know what I tell them? I said, I don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Amen. And I said, you know what? That guy dead. <laughs> that, I, I don't know that guy. Well, you, I don't know that guy who you're talking about. That guy, that, that guy died. Amen. And it's... Oh, you, and he's talking about, what do you mean you died? You're standing right here in front of me. What do you mean you died? I, see, they don't understand because I'm talking, I'm talking by the Spirit. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I'm not going to allow the devil to, to bring me back into my past. I'm going to walk in divine health. I'm going to walk in divine healing. And I'm not going to let the devil bring me back into my past and cause that sickness to come back up on me again. I'm going to walk the path that I've been given to walk. The path of life. Amen. The path of life. Amen. I'm going to walk that path. Glory to God. Why? Because I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want to experience. I don't want to experience that no more. I've experienced it and I don't want it no more. Amen. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to keep walking by faith and not by sight. I'm not going to walk after the flesh. Look what it says right there in verse number. We're still in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now look at verse number. Verse number 8. Romans chapter 8, verse number 8. Amen. So then they that are after the flesh cannot please God. You see, if I'm still, if, if they pull me back in my past, then I'm going to yield back to the flesh. And I, I can't please God in the flesh. 
The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, chapter six, Mr. Chapter eleven, verse number six, it said he said, "But without faith, it is impossible to please God." Amen. So if I if I'm pulled back into my past and think about my past, it's gonna pull me out of faith because I'm. It's gonna cause me to refocus on my past, and that's gonna pull me out of faith. Amen. Because if, I, if I'm pulled out of faith, that means I'm yielding back to the flesh again. And I don't want to yield to my flesh because if I yield to the flesh, that I can't please God in the flesh. The Bible tells us right here, verse Romans chapter 8, verse number 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. And the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11, verse number 6, says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God, for they that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is the reward of them that just really seek him. I want the rewards that God has for me because of my because I, I choose to continue to walk by faith. I want the reward that God has prepared for me to receive. What is my reward? My reward is my healing. My reward is my deliverance. My reward is my is the is, is my is, is the is the word of God manifested on my part. Amen. God wants me. To experience his goodness. God want me to, to have a testimony to share with the people that are hurting around me. Why? Because he want them healed also. He want them free also. And he wants you free. He wants you free. How can you get your brother and your sisters free around you or your neighbors free or your co-workers free if you're not free yourself? Remember, he that the son set free is free indeed. Amen. He that the sons that free is free indeed. So now when I look at this, I look at what God has done, amen, for as many, look at verse number 14, Romans chapter 8, verse number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, you know now if you are a son or a daughter of God, God is our Father. Amen. And when you have a, when you are a father or a child and your father or your and your mother, they see you sick. Do they uh, walk away because you get sick or do, do they uh, just turn it back on you because you start crying out for help? No, they never turn it back on you. you I'm, I am a father. And I have a daughter, and if she started talking about she's sick and started talking about she's hurting, you think I'm going to turn my back on her? Well, how much more will my heavenly father not turn his back on us when we begin to call upon his name, when we begin to cry out to him? Do you think that God would turn his back on you when you begin to call on his name? You are his child. Amen? And if you're sick, he's wanting to come to your aid. He wants to rescue you from that sickness, from that disease. He's going to do what he can to help you to ease, to, to be free from that sickness. When you do the same thing for your child, when your child gets sick, what are you going to do? You're going to try to find some medicine or are you going to run and take that child to the doctor, to the hospital or whatever, amen, to get that child some help, amen? How much more will your heavenly father want to see you get the same help that you need to, to, for you to walk in divine health and healing? He's your father. He's not going to turn his back on you. Oh, but you know, we we all we all can't be healed. We all gonna die with something. No, why you wanna talk like that? Don't let the devil cause you to belittle yourself. You are a child of the most high God. And God is not mad at you. He's not angry at you because you made a mistake. He loves you. He will never turn his back on you. He wants to help you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to encourage you. He wants you to be everything he created you to be. So don't look at your situation, at your circumstances, and thinking that no one cares or no one is looking at you, no one watching you. Someone is watching. His name is Jesus. He's not only watching you, but he's watching you how you deal with the word, how you meditate on the word, how you take the word and apply it to your life. He's watching how you Treat the word because the way you treat the word is the same way you're going to treat him. If you have respect for the word, then you're going to have respect for him. Oh, hallelujah. Just think about it. God paid the ultimate price for your healing, for your deliverance, 
to set you free. <clears throat> How do I know? Because he paid the same price for me. He paid the same price for me. And I'm free. I'm free. Oh, I'm free. Hallelujah. And Proverbs, excuse me, in Psalms 103, verse number one and two, Psalms 103, verse one and two says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. See, once you have, once you have yielded back to God, God, he's going to yield back to you. And then all you, he says, and all he wants you to do is just begin to bless his name. What is, and that's what the psalmist said right here in Psalm 103, verse number two, verse number two and three. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget. Well, what benefit? The healing that he have made available for you is part of your benefit. That's a benefit that God has given. That's a benefit that God has made available. Amen. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Well, one of his benefits is your healing, your deliverance. Amen. Who forgive it all thy diseases? Who forgive who for, who for, who forgive it all thy iniquities? See, whatever sin, whatever iniquity that you have been involved in, God, he, he forgave you. Amen. Who heals all your diseases. He wants to heal your diseases. He wants to heal you right now today. Amen. He wants to heal you right now today. And remember what Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, And he sent his, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now let's go to another scripture that I, that, that uh, that's very, very powerful. And it's found in the book of Isaiah. Yeah, we, we're going to go to Isaiah. We use this scripture a lot. Amen. But there's a cause for it. There's a purpose for it. There's a reason for it. God want to do everything he can to help you to believe the word because the life is in the word. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Remember what we said in Proverbs chapter four and verse number 20? He said, my son, incline thine ear unto my saying. You know, pay attention to what I'm saying. Amen. And let them not depart from thine eyes or from thy heart. Pay attention to what God is saying in his word. And if you don't understand it, meditate on it. Read it over and over and over and over and over until it become, until it, begin, until it come off the pages into your spirit. Once it come off the pages into your spirit, now it's beginning to take on life. It's, it, now, once it begins to take on life, it's going to begin to drive out that darkness that's in your body. What do you mean darkness? I'm talking about that sickness. I'm talking about that disease. I'm talking about that virus. Amen? Don't be afraid. Don't throw your hand up like there's no way out. God has given you a way out. And that's by standing on the word. In Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah chapter 53, verse number four says, Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Verse number five says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes the stripe that he took on his back in Pontius Pilate's courtyard with his stripes 
Notice what he said. We are healed. There it is right there. We are healed. And what do you got to believe? You got to believe that you're healed. Now, it doesn't matter if you're still experiencing symptoms in your body. That has nothing to do with you healed or not. Your mindset, your heart condition has everything to do with whether or not you're healed. How you believe the word of God, how you how you perceive the word of God, how you understand the word of God, that will determine whether or not you're going to receive your healing. Healing is going to come to you by faith. That's why it's so important how you hear, how you hear. Be careful how you hear because how you hear will determine what you receive from you're going to receive according to how you hear it. You receive according to how you hear it. Amen. Jesus. God love you. He sent his son into the earth to die for you. He laid down his life that you may be able to live. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, Jesus. Oh, my God, thank you so much. Father, let your anointing, that power that is falling on me right now, let it fall upon those under the sound of my voice. I release that anointing again, Father. I bless your people. I bless your people. In the name of Jesus, receive that anointing now. Receive your healing now. There it is. Shata malabako la basai. Hashele beke la basondre ki. Jangroso imangre shanamoko. De shemana la ketele. Ishena. Thank you, Father. For thus said the Lord, I have poured out to you this day that if you would open up your heart and simply receive that which was spoken and believe that the life of the word is working, I will cause my word to produce exactly what you have received, what you have heard, what you have believed, and what you are acting upon even now. Faith will open the door for your breakthrough. I am looking at your heart, said God. And I believe that as you believe and release that what you believe by faith concerning your need, I will meet that need for I am the Lord God that healeth thee. And I will not allow my word to fall to the ground, said the Lord. But I will cause it to accomplish that which I please. For my word is life and health and healing to all your flesh. I will not allow my word to fall to the ground. If you can believe it, then simply open up your heart right now and declare, I am free. I am healed. I am free. I am healed and I am free. And don't let go of that word. Meditate upon it and you will see 
that you are free and that you are healed, said the Lord. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you all for joining us. Amen. This is Pastor Larry. And I want you to know that I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for all of you that are joining me on these networks. I'm praying for you. And I pray that you receive your healing. This is your time. This is your season. It's your, t- it's, it's your time. Receive it now in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll be back another night with episode number 10. God bless. Until then, bye-bye.